Greetings munchkins and viewers alike, it's me Munchie. Today I wish to talk to you guys about bedding. Bedding is very important for our small hamster companions and I just want to lay down some ground rules for this video before we get into it. One, I'm only going to be talking about hamsters because there's other species that we care for at Munchie's Place for Homeless Pets here in Washington State with our rescue. We just want to address the hamster bedding depth. Two, we're going to be mainly talking about the U.S. standards, but I will mention some other places that have different bedding depth requirements. Three, this video is probably going to be dated, so if you are clicking on this in the future, make sure you are up to date with the current standards. And I'll update this video too if standards for the U.S. have changed. That being said, let's talk about bedding depth. Now, there is two things to mention for bedding depth. First, there's going to be a minimum and there's going to be a recommended. And then of course there is always going to be more is better. But let's talk about the minimum. Minimum means that it's the lowest bedding depth that people should go. This is still within standard. It is still accepted and there should be no quarrels against people who are using a minimum because a lot of products out there in the US are only a bedding depth of six inches for their pan. Unless it's a tank, then of course tank, you can definitely add more bedding, but a lot of people are limited based off of what they can purchase here in the US. And that's another reason why there's gonna be different minimum bedding depth requirements around the world because of what sells in their country and also the pet laws that are guided by your country or state. Now, recommended means something that you personally recommend that you are currently keeping, something that you don't usually go lower, but are staying kind of around because it makes your animal happy and it makes you happy. Scientific studies have shown us that hamsters really benefit from deep bedding depths because studies show that it causes less stressors. Whereas if they don't have enough bedding to burrow, it causes more stressors. But with that being said, there's always gonna be a middle ground, they suggest, because when it comes to tameability, especially for a new animal companion, it's best to start off with the minimum bedding and increase your bedding over time. That way you can spend time with your small animal companion and they can get used to you. If you put your new animal companion in something that has a lot of bedding depth, it is actually not recommended and I was told based on my experience with getting a hamster, an ethical one from Hubba Hubba Hamstery here in America, that start off with less bedding and increase over time. That way I can bond with my boy. I, of course, did kind of halfsies where I start off with a little bit, then add in a lot, and then I found out, no, that spooks my hamster. Let's do less right now. And I kept going back and forth until we were at a comfortable spot where I was able to interact with him and he wouldn't get so screechy at me. And Cookie Monster is still alive to this day. He's my wonderful boy. Very happy to have him. So now let's talk about bedding minimums because that's where we should strive for to not aim any lower than that in our community. And again, just a reminder, if someone's within the minimum, please do not go ahead and harass them saying they need more. As an animal community, we need to be there for each other, make suggestions when need be, but do not be pushy. However, when it comes to inappropriate care, definitely there is always room to make suggestions, but you have to approach things gingerly. In America, we used to have a minimum way back in the day when we did not know any better of three inches. Now, three inches is stuff that you might see at the pet store, however the pet stores, especially like Petco, they actually stride for just about one and a half to two inches of bedding. And we know for a fact that this is not an ideal situation because they are not able to create burrows. Yes, they can dig under three inches of bedding, but they can't have a natural burrow system where there will be a main chamber, multiple other small chambers to store food, and there will be a potty chamber. In here, Usually you would just see a hamster go into the corner and also put their food into a corner as well. And that's it. It's all surface. You can see them on the surface. Now surface area is great for when they are traveling at night when they are the most active, but during sleeping time, they really need darkness and they need chambers, but bedding depth, also regulates their body temperature and controls ammonia. So if you don't have as much bedding inside of there, then it's going to cause stress for both you having to clean it so often and your hamster who has to smell it often and walk on it. The minimum in America as of recently has kind of 
been up and down. Hubba Hubba Hamstery, she recommends six inches. Ginger's Syrian Guide on the California Hamster Association website says four to six inches. And Pet MD. now this one's very interesting because I don't know where Pet MD is based off of and where they're getting their information from, but I have found that they have separated bedding depth based on species. So for Syrian hamsters, they actually recommend 10 as a minimum. And for dwarf hamsters, six as a minimum. I found that to be interesting and I feel like it is going in the right direction. But as a general guideline, people are just still choosing six inches of bedding as a minimum here in the United States because that is what we can easily have access to right now. Six inches will allow them to burrow. They can move their bedding side to side. It doesn't all have to be an even layer of six inches. One side could be even even higher than the other. It's all based on what your setup looks like, what type of setup you have, and how much pan depth you can create. Now, a little shout out to Singapore Hamster Society. They recommend seven inches as a starting minimum. I do not know their care over in Singapore. Don't know what enclosures they have besides making their own enclosures, which I have seen. But if that is a great minimum to have, then that is fantastic. I wish that my Preview 528s would actually have more than seven inches of bedding depth. Unfortunately, it only has six inches, which still meets the minimum requirements, and that is what we're currently using at our rescue. At our rescue, unfortunately, we cannot do personal care. We have to do our rescue care, and those are gonna be two completely different things. And the reason for that is because we take in a large number of animals, so we do not have a lot of supplies, not all the time at least. There has been times when we are very low on bedding or there will be times when the community comes together, donates a large amount of bedding and we are able to use more for the animals that we have. However, we also have to budget our supplies and our spending for those funds that we do get at the rescue just to make sure we are providing at least minimum for the animals within our care. Whereas personal, you guys should definitely do as much as you can for your little hamster. So please think about that. And that brings us to recommended being 10 inches and it is definitely something that we should all strive for. Victoria Rachel has also recommended 10 inches of bedding for those of you who follow her. It is wonderful to see them make tunnels and burrows, especially in tank enclosures. That's why today's video I am showing off all of the bedding depth inside of tanks because it's easy to see and you guys can get a gist of what it looks like in comparison to the others. Sometimes in videos, it is kind of hard to tell what bedding depth I might have behind me while filming videos, but just know that sometimes looks can be deceiving, but definitely it brings a smile to everyone's face when you do see a lot of bedding in an enclosure. So 10 inches, lots of places to burrow. However, inside of a 10 gallon tank that I'm demonstrating in, you're not gonna be able to store much. So let's show you what it looks like being put inside of a 40 gallon breeder here. The 40 gallon breeder, we're starting off by showing you being at three inches, which actually is the same pan depth as a KT critter trail cage, the ones that are being pushed out in America that you still see on store shelves after two decades of the same construction, the same enclosures from when I was growing up as a child. They claim that you need to attach them all together because that's how it creates tunnel systems. However, it is not beneficial to them because they cannot create burrows within those enclosures because again, pan depth is three inches. Not suitable for them. Please, if anybody uses KT traditional cages out there, watch some review videos of your specific cage and get a better idea of why it is not appropriate. Next, we're adding six inches just so you can see the minimum inside of a 40 gallon breeder. And of course, if you wanna go all out, there is the 10 inches or you can do more because bigger, again, is always better for them. But just reminder, make sure that your hamster is very comfortable with you because the bigger the space is, the more chance you're gonna have at not being able to find them. 10 inches looks fantastic inside of a 40 gallon breeder. But there's other enclosures out there. These are just a few examples today that I wish to share with you. And I hope you enjoyed the education video today. If you did, hit like to show support. If there is anybody out there that needs some guidance, 
why not show them this video? Subscribe if you like to become a part of the Munchkin family. And please let me know down below what your recommended or currently using height is for bedding. I would love to hear your thoughts and about your hamsters. So thanks guys so much, and I'll see you around in the next video. Bye.